this building sits here, and then we believe there's oil down here, and there are so many buildings around, so we don't want to come and now break the building and then put a hole in the ground. So we can sit somewhere, maybe say the Melcom area, and then put a rig there, and we Take drill, down and then here. we drill the way. Welcome to Energy Quest. We have here the World Delivery Team Lead. That's Mr. Derek Kuchik from Telu Oil. He's right there. He does it all. He leads the team that handles everything drilling. So all the questions you have will be answered today. We, we see the vessels on. I mean, we see the rig. And then we would always wonder, how is the drilling done to get oil from down there? Mm -hmm. How's the whole mechanism? So I'll try and explain it as simple, simple as, as I can, can for the viewers who don't know anything about the oil and gas Good. and things like that. The only thing I can say is it's a beautiful process. Honestly, wow. it is a beautiful process. We, we, same thing like with drill on land mm -hmm. is the same principle, but because when you get on to the sea side, there's a column of water that you need to protect. Okay. So then certain things come in. Then instead of having the land rigs, you do have the, either the jack-ups, which smaller water depth, or the badges for the swamps and stuff like that, or the semi-submissibles mm -hmm. for a bit deep water, and then the drill ships for okay. the very ultra deep water stuff and all like that. So basically the whole idea or the process of drilling doesn't just happen like that. Mm -hmm. It starts from somewhere. So what we do is we know the end goal. The end goal is, okay, the well I'm going to drill, is there a new place? Mm -hmm. Is this the first time we're going there? What are we trying to do there? So that we call a wild cut because you okay. don't know what is there. You're going to find what is there. So when you go in, all you are doing is gathering information and things like that. But before they do that, the geologist and then the other guys will go in and then shoot seismic waves, yeah. gather all the data. And then what they look for is not a pocket of oil sitting in the ground. They look for deformations in the X structure okay. that tells you that there's a possibility of an accumulation of something there. Okay. So when they, they look at all that, they have all that data, they clean it up. So usually they'll do the 2D, 3D, now we even do 4D, where you can okay. see the structure properly. So what they do is, after they've done all that, then the reservoir engineers, they look at all the data, the petroleum engineers look at everything and go like, okay, when you look at this point in the earth, we think there's something there. Mm -hmm. At that point, we don't know what is there. It could be water, it could be oil, it could be oh, anything. Oh, you just tell there's an accumulation of there's something. There's something there, but you don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. Up until you put a hole in the ground, you will not know what is okay. there. So it's a lot of investment that has to go there. Exactly. So if you go there, go and there's, and, and there's and nothing. Water. We call it a dry hole. Oh, dear. So if you spend between 50 to $100 million on a well, and, and, and there's nothing there, that's holes. money gone. So the decision to drill is a very important and it is a very massive decision. It doesn't just happen overnight. It can take years before it's done. Okay. So the guys give us all that information. We do all the analysis and all that, and then they hand it over to us. They go like, okay. So they give us what we call a statement of requirement. So they tell us, okay, we are going to drill this well. Is there an exploration well? Mm -hmm. Because it's never been there before. So this is the first time we're going there. Yeah. So the first uh, move is what we call exploration. Exploration, yes. Yeah. So they've done all that seismic and all that. And then the first well we put in the ground, it's a wildcat well, it's an exploration well. We're going to explore. We're going to see what is there. So every information we gather from that well is so important yeah. to us. So everything that goes in there is very important. So we go in as a company, we look at all the service providers. Everybody and what it does, we give them a contract, they gather all their equipment, their personnel, and then they come in. And then when they come in, we put the well or we put the hole in the ground. To put the hole in the ground, the whole drilling process, what we look at is they give us a point, which is a geological point, mm -hmm. which is a surface location. Okay. And then they give us a geological point which is a target location, which is in the ground. Okay. And they tell us that this is where they want us to get to, in the ground. You can drill either a vertical well to get there, 
or you can draw. What, how do you decide which works? So if you are drawing aspiration well, you don't understand the formation and all that. So you know that, okay, this is what I'm going to do. So there's nothing there. So if I know this is where it is, I can sit on top of it and I can drill all the way into okay. it. Okay. But if you go into a place where, let's say what we have in Ghana now, we've drilled so many wells, so there's a development well. So to get to certain targets, you cannot just go and put an infrastructure there okay. or start drilling. There's stuff there. So you, can, you have to sit somewhere and you need to and drill to that course. point. Okay. Or this building sits here and then we believe there's oil down here. And there are so many buildings around, so we don't want to come and now break the building and then put a hole okay. in the ground. So we can sit somewhere, maybe say the Melcom area, and then put a rig there and we Tug drill down and then here. we drill all the way. And all this is simple math, trig, trigonometry, trigonometry and all this thing. Yes. Wow. It's, a, it's a beautiful like that. Wow. So the whole process for land is easy. You just put the rig on, you do the top hole, stuff like that. But offshore, what makes it complicated is the fact that you need to isolate the water. So you don't have to put stuff in the water. So to drill, there are sections we drill. Because you're going into the seabed. Yes. So we don't just drill one hole, we drill mm -hmm. sections. Because some of the wells are a bit longer. So you have to okay. drill them in sections. So now we know, okay, we're going to do a gas producer or a gas injector. Mm -hmm. We know we're going to do a water injector or an oil producer. Okay. We know what we want to do before we start it. Mm -hmm. So when we go in, we know the target, we know the surface location. Now, depending on what purpose you want to use the well for, for an exploration well, it means that you just want to get data. So you want to drill to a certain size of hole to get into the formation. If it's a injector, you know that, okay, maybe I need to put this size of hole mm -hmm. into the ground to get a certain size that can get the gas in or the gas out. Okay. So let's say some of the sizes, you could have a four and a half inch, that's where you want it to be. You have a five and a half inch, that's what the final size you want it to be. Mm -hmm. Or you can have a seven inch, that's the final size you want it to be. So for the drilling process, we, we know all this. So we sit down with the whole planning process, we sit down with the, the drilling engineers, the completions engineers, the production engineers, the subsea engineers. So everybody comes. Everybody comes together. Mm -hmm. So you need to tell us what you want, that we deliver what you want for you. Okay. So in most companies, the... Drilling department is like a service company. They, 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 they get told, okay, this is what we want, and then they come and deliver it for you and all that. So in drilling, the whole drilling process, now we know the size of all we want to drill. Okay. So what we do is we know that, okay, if I need to get to this whole size, let's say a pipe. We run the pipe in the ground, which is the casing. The whole idea for the casing is to try and keep the edge structure away from us so it doesn't collapse on us because you don't want to drill. Sometimes you want to drill open hole. We get to that point, go back. You need to put a pipe, which is like a case, in the hole to try and secure the hole. So we know that, okay, if I'm going to drill a well to, say, a 958 casing, so it means I have to set it in a 958 casing, I probably have to drill a 12 and quarter inch hole so I can oh, put the, so can have I can have the casing in and all that. Because the casing that you put in, you need to cement it as well. It's called to keep it intact. Mm -hmm. So we know all this. So then we know, okay, if that's the case, if a 95... So once you're doing the drill, there should be a cementing engineer there. Everything. Who There's even a mad engineer staff there. Yeah, we'll talk about. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. So it's, I mean, that's teamwork. Yes. The... And it's very key. So if you, if you want to work in the oil industry, you need to know how to work with people because you're going to work with a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I see a lot of teamwork yes. there. Yes. I see yeah. a lot of devotion and dedication. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. And mm. you know, you, you said lots of stuff in there is all mathematics and the trig yes. and all that yeah. there's this i mean always that joke about studying so much of these um formulas and what's not that exactly. are not actually used yes but there you go yes i mean where it's it's really used it's really there used on the yes rig. yes okay. and it's all been so. put into softwares and things like that so most of the time now our work is easier yeah. so we're running them in softwares but Actually, you need to understand so now you do remote drilling don't you yes but not in ghana yet but yes places like norway and the rest they do that they remotely drill they, they so can there's do remote. no engineer on site no so basically the remote drilling is a tricky so they have the rig and then they have all everything automated mm -hmm. so someone can sit in the office 
and then control the rig and then move pipe and make pipe together and then bore a wow, hole in the ground. It's, you don't yeah, need to be on the rig. It's, it's amazing. It's that's, it's 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 amazing. It's, it's amazing. Okay. We've we've advanced as well in gas. Yeah. Really yeah, that we really have done. Yeah. Mm. So like same. So with a drilling process like that, we know the size and we come up like that. So if I know, okay, I have a nine five eight case and I need to set. That's my last casing. Mm -hmm. Then it means I need to drill a twelve and quarter inch hole. Okay. Then I do that. Then I know that. Okay. In order to pass a twelve one a twelve and quarter inch hole to a hole up, it means that I need to drill. I need to set a bigger casing. So okay. I say I need to set a thirteen three eight casing. So if I'm going to set a 13 3 inch casing, then I need to probably maybe drill a 20 inch hole or a 16 and a half inch hole, something bigger so I can put the case. So you need clearance to run the casing in. So that's how we plan it. So it's like in systematic systematic order. The but then you can't start from the bottom. You need to start from the top because you need to drill the hole from the top. So you need to understand where you need to get to, and you work oh, it backwards. You gotta start from the top. Yes. And drop it. Yes, but because you know what your final hole will be. You want to work it. So to design the wells, you need to design them from the bottom all the way to the top. And then we start from the top. So when we go, let's say offshore, let me use an offshore example. When we go offshore, we have the drill pipes. We connect them together with a drill pit at the bottom and a couple of drilling tools. And then the drilling tools, there's all sort of purposes for it, for gathering data, some gather data, some to be able to turn the bit and stuff like that. The bit is just... A, a, like it's like a, a tool at the front of the drill string okay. which allows you to break through the rocks whilst you spin it around. So we go in first, we drill what we call the top hole. We drill the top hole mm -hmm. and then we run what we call the conductor. So the whole idea for the conductor is we set it in the ground and then the hole now is now open. The conductor keeps the hole open and then it allows to also protect us from all the fresh water and all the other things around us so we don't contaminate it. Because mm -hmm. every level of the edge, you might probably have a water table. So the connector allows yeah. you to isolate that and it gives you the initial structure. Okay. Then we go ahead and then we drill what we call the surface hole. So we drill the next hole section. So the connector will probably be like 36 mm -hmm. inch and then we run it in. We jet, we literally jet it in. So the jetting process is like you're running it and then you don't cement the, the top hole, like the conductor. Mm -hmm. You just drill whilst you put it in the ground. It's like, and the casing is just a pipe. Okay. So metallic pipe, hard body. So all the law of calculation goes into it to make it, because you need to know how strong it is so that it doesn't collapse on you, so okay. that the whole strength... So are there times that water seeps into it? No, but because your whole design also prevents all that. But right now you are drilling already in water. So whilst you're drilling, you have water and all that. Then okay. There's it's always, like it's yeah, yeah, cap, yeah, yeah it's, it's normal part of it. Okay. But then when you are drilling it, we call something the drilling fluid. People call it the mud. So it's oh. like fluid you mix. And the whole idea for it is that when you are drilling it, it takes out all the cuttings. But on the seabed, it will just put everything on the seabed because now we've not done anything else. Then you drill the surface hole, set the surface mm -hmm. casing. So the surface casing is what has what we call the high pressure wellhead. Okay. So the whole idea for that now is from that point on, every, everything you're going to drill from that point on, you want everything to come to the surface. So, and then sometimes when you start going deeper, there are pressures down there, there are things that, that could come at you. Wow, it's, yeah. it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. Very, so, very interesting. So we run what we call a blowout preventer. It's like a safety feature. So we run it on top of the high pressure wellhead. And then from that point, we connect a series of pipes. Mm -hmm. They are called the risers. So the riser pipes. So they are connected all the way to the surface, okay. to the rig. So that everything that goes on from the surface point, yeah. like the surface casing point connected. going, all the way comes to surface. And at the same time, when you are drilling and you need to pump fluids and stuff like that, there are conduits that can go in and out. So you connect them all the way to the top. Amazing. Like, yeah, Amazing. like that. Amazing. And then from that point, you can drill all the way to the bottom. Mm -hmm. Because we understand the structure and the strength of the formation, after you drill to a certain depth, you, yeah. the thing might collapse on you and stuff like that. So you need to come up, assess it. It's all designed on paper. Okay. Everything is designed, all the calculations. Well, you have to follow through systematically. You have to follow systematically. And if there's any changes, we sit down, we discuss, and we change, like we, we kind of discuss it, and then we know mm -hmm. what to 
do next. But all this thing is agreed. It goes through about five or six hands for approval yeah. because everybody looks at it. The engineer does it. The supervisor reviews it. The manager reviews it. Yeah, it looks the like a strict systematic system. Yes, that yes. No, everybody because has to because, to because what you are doing is very risky and costly. Any and very costly. Any mistake you can you can kill people. Mm -hmm. So it's important that everything is done in such a way that it's done safely. That's yeah. the most. So in the oil and gas industry, safety. It's, it's paramount. It's key to us. So everything is done safely as so much as possible. The guys are right there. They are right there with us, that ensuring that everything is done. And order. for every design we do, there is a redundancy. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we design the well, and we can go like, okay, if we drill to this point and we can't get to this point to set it, it means we need to set the case in early. So it means after that, we need to reduce the size of the hole. And if that happens on the fly, so we call it real time. In real time, if that happens, there's going to be a discussion while we are drilling. There's going to be a discussion. And we're going to decide, okay, this is what we're doing. This is what we phase. And all these things are pre-checked at the early stages of the planning process. Okay. So our planning process, so that's where the whole well delivery process comes in. So everything is checked step by step. Even for the equipment, before we send oh, the equipment the to the rig or wherever it is, we have guys and their job is to make sure that the equipment that is coming in is spare spec, is spare design, wow. and is spare what we paid contractually for. Yeah, looking looking at the cost of this whole thing, nobody yes. can sit back and just watch things done anyhow. No, no, you know. no. So